Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. It is a beautiful-ish day. It's super windy. Kids got out of school early because of wind. That never happened when I was a kid. They just said, we don't really care if you blow off the road and you'll be all right if you make it home or not. But these folks didn't blow away. They made it in here and they're, I'm, well, I'm just excited for you guys to meet them. Sasha and Rachel, they're the Grateful Nomads with a G. And welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. What so, intro. well, thanks. I'm, I'm, I've practiced a little bit. Um, I'm getting pretty decent at it. So, Johnson City Living, this is a podcast. We always ask first question What's your favorite thing about Johnson City? Pals. <laughs> I knew she was going to say that. There you go. And Sasha? Um, okay, so being from Detroit, I'm not a Johnson City local, but uh, being from a big, sprawling city, I just love that in Johnson City you can get anywhere in 10 minutes. It doesn't matter where you're going. It's 10 minutes. It's pretty good. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 And if you take a wrong turn, you just keep driving and you end up there anyways. So it's just like a few minutes longer. <laughs> there are you know. multiple ways yeah. to get to one place. So I'll be like, oh, can... no, I was supposed to turn left. I went right. It's okay. It's I can okay. still go. I'll just make a loop yeah. around. We'll there. cut through. Yeah, stop at Pals on the way. You know? There's no circle it really is kind of a big circle we've got a big uh like yeah the state of franklin just goes in a big circle mm-hmm. okay so one of you grew up in detroit the other one grew up in johnson city let's hit the detroit guy first there you go so how was detroit growing up oh uh, well i grew up in the burbs i'm from gross point uh ah, really here we go me, like the movie yeah they only it was play- like- you were playing it all hard before the I thing mean, like i'm tough and gangster and i, I will I, my I, car i break into car my car got broken into but now here we are i'm, I'm from the suburbs i went to a nice private school nothing like nothing like the movie by the way gross point blank okay. shot all of 10 seconds in my hometown they okay a, they got a clip of our little shopping area and a clip of my high school and that's it they shot the rest of the movie in california um but i like to tell people so i'm from the burbs sure i always claim detroit obviously nice because i uh, my first job was carrying golf clubs at the country club and uh, it was a longer trip for me to get to work at the country club than it was for me to like get into like Detroit, Detroit. I like, got you. The hood. So <laughs> my parents are right there on the edge, kind of. Yeah. And you know, I mean, hockey was was my life as a kid. That's cool. You know, I saw the w- Wings win a couple Stanley Cups when yeah. uh, the Russian Five were playing for Detroit, and my last name being Savinov, my uh, classmates called me the Russian Sixth. Oh. Um, I unfortunately can't really ice skate or play hockey, but. You know, <laughs> That was life growing up, you know, right? All about the the Detroit Red Wings and um, you know the Motor City, baby. Music. Yeah. I you know just grew up on music, um, playing music, going to concerts, and listening to music all day, every day. Yeah, you mentioned a lot of concerts, so I'm excited to yes. hear about some of those. And oh, so, yeah. yeah, and then Rachel grew up in Johnson City, Tennessee, the best place on the world. I grew up right here. Yeah. So how was growing up in Johnson City for you? Um, it, I feel like it was your pretty um, average, typical. Um, family life. Like, yeah. I think Johnson City is a really great place for families. I agree. Um, mm-hmm. There's always a lot of family friendly activities and events and, and places to go and really nice parks. Um, but I think that Johnson City is a lot cooler now than it was when I was growing up. It <laughs> is. It's, we're coming around. Like it's getting to be super cool. Yeah. So it was safe and fun and a little boring. And <laughs> right. <laughs> that's why you didn't stay here for college, probably. I. That's exactly why I didn't stay here for college. But I didn't go far. You didn't go far. Where'd you go? Appalachian State. Gotcha. Yep. She thought hippies were extinct. <laughs> then she went and up she to the went mountains. To Bonnaroo and went to App State. And was like, wow, they still exist. Hey, look at this place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is a little different, just over the mountain there. Yeah. And boom. Yeah. yeah. It's like a whole nother world, which is cool. Right. Because it's really close, and that's what I love about Johnson City too. Like we can be a bunch of different places and get a bunch of different feels and you know things going on that were not far 
You know, exactly. it's a beautiful and totally different. area. Yeah. And there's all kinds of outdoor activities that are just a stone's throw away. Yeah. That's true. It is. It's awesome. And the people here are fantastic. The people are super friendly. Southern hospitality yeah. is real. I Southern can attest Southern hospitality to that. is very real. My, my, uh, have you coached him up on that? Yeah, yes. I'm learning. Exactly. He's really nice. He's figured like, it yeah. out. Yeah, he's getting there. There's a Midwest hospitality, but we have a little bit, we're a little bit harsh, you know, it's a little rough around the edges. Yeah. And my dad's Russian, but my mom's uh, side of the family is from Yonkers, New York. So I definitely have a, hey, I'm walking here. Yeah. Kind of attitude about me. I got it. <laughs> and then the Russian guy's just like chopping yeah, it down, like, Russian, stay in. Like, let's eat pierogies and drink vodka because life is miserable. So he's really just Midwestern in name only. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And accent. I don't really have the New well, York accent. You but you don't really have a Midwest accent either. It's just, it's just the Somewhere plain the news middle. anchor accent, man. <laughs> news anchor One accent. of these days. Uh, you're hiring local Johnson City TV. Come on. <laughs> Sasha's available for hire. Um, all right, let's talk about grateful nomads. Good nomads. Yes. We like Tell alliteration. Us. Uh, yeah, I like it. So tell us one, let's start the story from the origin. How did you guys meet? You're from Detroit. You're from JC. Never yeah, tell the show the two bitch. Okay. Went to App State. So, you know, we loved App State because they beat Michigan, but I didn't even know where it was. Yeah. So I had to that was a big it. deal. Yeah. Sasha <laughs> mentioned music. I started playing piano when I was six and trumpet when I was 11. I was in the marching band at Science Hill. So like music go was toppers. Also, exactly, yep. go toppers. Music was always a big part of my life. And then at App State, I studied music business, which was a really good reason for me to go to all the concerts and all the research. music festivals. Because I was I'm doing, doing research. Because the name of the degree is music industry studies. And that's precisely what I was doing, was there studying you go. the industry. Right. Um, it's a lot that goes into putting on a concert, as it turns out. Right? You don't know, just show up and plug in. <laughs> yes. And so my internship was working with a company that put together groups of volunteers for the festivals. And so that's how I met Sasha. I was a I volunteer. Was, he was a volunteer. I was supervising she was the my volunteers. Boss. She was volunteering you what yeah. to do. <laughs> if you had a walkie-talkie, that's yeah. how you know you're serious. That's you? right. I'm, I'm big time. And a golf cart. That's like... Next level, if you're at a festival with a golf Like if truck. you had a, like a whistle, <laughs> yeah. then you're really, really doing some stuff. So it was, it, was, it was the Rothbury Music Festival in Michigan in the town called Rothbury. They only had it in 2008 and 2009. We met but at the first one. then it became Electric Now it's Electric Forest. Forest. It still so exists. So if you've heard of yeah. Electric Forest, it's, it's that festival. Yeah. It has I think my buddy John Phillips with Access Security does that one and Barnaroo, because you mentioned yep. Barnaroo yeah. here. Yeah. And so Baby he Bonnaroo, does that too. Yeah. A couple times. So we, I, I was a volunteer. She was a coordinator or whatever, but we actually lived at the festival site for the week leading up to the festival and decorated the forest, the electric ah, forest. That's cool. So we got you to electrify see it life and it was so cool to watch all these hippies have their mind blown. Like, <laughs> cause they put lights and art all over the woods and it's just this psychedelic playground. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> now, how many people go to the electric, for, electric uh, forest concert? It's smaller now than it was when it was Rothbury. But it was but, Rothbury, it was like 60 or Yeah, it was huge and it was Rothbury. And they that's like it back. everybody in Johnson City is going. I would say 20,000 these days yeah, for electric Between 20 and 30. Yeah. It sells out. It sold out immediately this year. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. prior to the pandemic, they had to do two weekends. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it got so big. That's we, cool. We haven't been since the original. Um, we, we do go to a lot of stuff. Is that, on, is that on the list to do before? Oh, it's sold out this year. The so bucket I'm, list maybe before one day? to send me there, cash or trade, if you guys are watching, you know, if you want to send me uh, to work a booth, you know, I will I mean, I can it. sell tickets there. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, we can certainly do promotion. Um, so, yeah, we met at that festival, but it's kind of funny. I met Rachel and I just graduated college. And I was like, was always, you know, hoping to meet a, a cute girl at a concert who likes the kind of music I like because it's very niche. Yeah. You know, like in Fish and the Dead and all uh -huh. the hippie bands you travel for and I met her and I was like, wow, this girl's awesome. And I had a flight booked to Beijing to move to China a month later. So, you know, nice one, Sasha. Um, Way to go. We were like Skype buddies for the first year. You know, we weren't, like, we weren't a, a thing. It was just like, we just met. So I was like, well. So you made a long distance relationship. No, no, no. We, we didn't, we didn't we even met, call it that. We met and hit it off. But then I left. We both had this like maturely odd Oddly mature self-awareness about Oddly the Oddly mature situation. maturely odd, either one. Yeah. <laughs> Both. Maturely odd. Or just plain, that's just plain odd language. and mature. That's yeah. tagline. Oddly mature. Oddly mature self-awareness about the situation where I think we both felt like I will, we like each other, but like you're moving to the other side of the world and... I don't think either of us wanted to put this unnecessary pressure on it. So yeah, but we were just... what did you tell me or ask me about coming back to the U.S.? What did I ask you? She forgot. She oh. was. She was like. 
Is there any way you would come back earlier mm -hmm. than you're planning yes. on? And what was your answer? Only a fish gets back together. Uh, and this the is, band. This is Did that happen? Not the animal. Fish with a pH. <laughs> right. I remember line. fish. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't they, remember if they got back together. He he left in August, and they announced in October that they were that they reunited. were coming back the, the following March. Um, and you're like, boom, so busted. I missed I missed out on the the comeback shows in the Hampton, Virginia. Tickets were crazy expensive, and I, I had literally just moved to China, so I was like, I can't go back like six months later. Yeah, I didn't have money for the flight, first of all. But uh, funny story at at those shows where the the tickets got so crazy expensive, my bosses, the Rich Brothers. Uh, started cash or trade of the company I work for because the tickets were out of control and they were like, hey, we used to just show up to a show and do this, put a finger in the air and you'd get a ticket. And now people want $500, this is nuts. They were developers and making websites and stuff. And so they kind of started right there, showing up at concerts with a, with a booth where um, you know people could put a little sticky note. Yeah. And so they started it. Uh, now it's a full blown app and website and I work for them, but I got a little detour there. Fish did come back, uh, did a reunion tour and we well, talked about so, going to see a bunch of shows together. And well, no, I thought we might go to one or two <laughs> fish concerts because they she had got, their big comeback show, but then they announced an entire summer tour. Yeah, yeah. There she you got go. Knoxville tickets. That was her first show. Right yeah. On the road, yes. Rocky Top. So Knoxville was my first fish show, which is essentially a hometown show. Uh -huh. I like to say that was our first date. I came back from China and uh, met Rachel in Knoxville. I hitched, hitched a ride with friends from Detroit and... We uh, slept on an air mattress in a friend's living room with 15 other people. <laughs> well, long story short, we ended up going to 20 fish concerts oh. four music festivals together in 2009. In 2009. Yeah. Wow. And then at the end of it, the uh, recession of the time was still raging. Yeah. Even more so than it had been when he left for mm -hmm. China. Yeah, it was rough. So we decided, okay, we're a couple, we're together. We're doing, you know, we're doing life together. Maybe we didn't say we're doing life together, but anyway. we figured if you could live in a tent together for three months, like on no sleep, like fifteen hour drives, in the and most like, uncomfortable situations, yeah, yeah. and still like each other, then then hey, you probably got right. something going for you. Yeah, but I insisted that we try to move to Nashville music so that business. I could get a job using your degree, music business degree, exactly. to make your parents very happy mm -hmm. because yep. they're like, hey, we paid a lot for that. Yeah, we paid yes. a lot for her to go out yes. of state. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just about 20 miles over the, over the line. Um, <laughs> long story Seriously. short, it didn't work out. No. Um, I passed out my resume to a bunch of different places and finally got one interview that they gave the entry level position to someone who, who had experience and had been laid off from a higher someone position. Got fired and then rehired Re a yeah. lower job. Right. Like that was the time, right? We you had to be like, oh yes, I'll take a lower paying job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. We got robbed twice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, first the house got robbed and then a couple weeks later my car got robbed. This was in Murfreesboro, not Johnson City. <laughs> or Detroit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yeah, Detroit. Well, don't don't yeah, sell exactly. Detroit's good name. Right, this was in right. This was in That's Murfreesboro. why Johnson City's better. <laughs> And eventually he was like, you know, in China, it's impossible for people to break yeah. into your apartment. <laughs> your door is like And at that solid. point, I was so fed up. I was like, let's go. I was ready for an adventure. I was ready for something completely different. I was like, so, you're a blonde American with a college degree. You're going to get 20 bucks an hour, no matter what. No you matter do what there. you do. Like straight up. And back in 09, like, that was like large cash. Oh, we, we said it was the wild, wild east when we were living in China, yeah. too. It was, it, was a, it was a wild time, really. Like. We didn't even have working visas. We just showed up <laughs> and went around like, hey, we need an English teacher? Yeah, cool. Let's do this. So you both taught English in China? Yes, mm -hmm. several years. We bought one-way tickets to Beijing, yeah. and I had like a babysitting slash tutoring job before we even showed up. And that was what helped me get my feet on the ground there. And She was uh, nannying basically for a very well-to-do uh, family, a, a professor at the best university in China. Nice out in the suburbs and had their private driver pick her up and go out to their mansion. They, and they fed her like three times in a couple hours. They had an elevator in there. <laughs> an elevator nice. in the house. I got to go to the girl's birthday party, so I saw the house once. <laughs> They're like, we're keeping him away. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good, good time. And now, yeah, what kind of gig did you have? Uh, oh man, I had so many different jobs over the years in China. I taught every every age from uh, babies up till retired people. Yeah, I worked in private institutions like after school weekend kind of training thing. I worked in kindergartens, primary schools at a university. I did private tutoring. I recorded my voice for textbooks that were the script was full of bad grammar, and I was like, "This is wrong." And they're like, "Just read it. It's fine." <laughs> We didn't, we didn't pay you to edit, dude. We paid right. you to read. Right. Read that terrible script. So it's, you know, if you ever meet 
you know, Chinese tourists and their English isn't great. It's, it's our fault. It's all because of you, because they had all the characters <laughs> already under the words. They're like, we have to go with what's there. <laughs> and if you Google Chinglish, by the way, you'll find some of my blog posts and, and videos over the years. We had a <laughs> hobby of taking photos of signs and menus that the tra- where the translation made absolutely no sense. It was one of the best parts of living. Oh, yeah. That's fun. T-shirts and hats with just nonsensical <laughs> yeah. English on it. And like, that was, that was a favorite pastime of ours. You know, you had to, you know, you had to laugh at at the situation. That's like, awesome. Now, how long? end up here in Beijing. So like, you left America, 09, go to well, March 2010. That, it was 2010. 2010, okay. Yeah. So fast forward a few years, you're there for how long in China? Too long? Jeez. Uh, in the end, it was <laughs> six years for me and five for Rachel, I think. Okay. I count my first right. year on my own, you know. Um, that was your first tour of duty over there? Yeah. I mean, we were in and out. We did a lot of traveling, well, but that was home. Really, that's really where we got the caught the travel bug. Mm-hmm. Like we started doing month long backpacking trips yeah. to Thailand and Laos and then like traveling to Southeast Asia any chance we could. And you meet all these Australians and Brits who are like, I'm on gap year, mate. And you're like, what is a gap like, year? I'm America. We don't year? know what that is. So you guys just is. take a year off to mess around. That sounds awesome. Our parents just slap us in the head and say, go we're, to college. We're yeah, just yeah. like school, job, golf. Yeah. That's America. There you go. <laughs> Get locked in. Yeah. But once we learned what a gap year was, we were like, well, I want to take I wanna, a gap year. I want year. that. I want to do that. I'm going to make up for all my friends too and take 10 gap years. We did it at 28 instead of 18. We did it, which was nice because we were like kind of mature and we were, you know, a couple. We could appreciate We got private rooms. We didn't sleep in the dorm with 15 people we would get private rooms like this is nice you know we would like rent scooters and rip around you know cambodia on a scooter and this is where the whole digital nomad yes that's where it started where it started it was the nomadic thing was like okay so we were living in china we were very much we had an apartment in beijing we had jobs we had eventually working visas we did go legal at some point um, but that's it was good. the gap year that taught us the skills that we needed to I was do gonna it say, it was like, lifestyle. While we were doing this this thing, um, someone, someone reached out to me and was like, hey, Sasha, you live in Beijing, and you I know you did video production in school. This company, this language company, wants blogs and videos on the ground of, of what it's like living in China, learning the language, learning how to use chopsticks, learning about the, the culture. And so I started writing blogs for them, doing YouTube videos for them, and managing their Facebook page for the Chinese language page and then we went to thailand and they were like oh do you have a bunch of videos from your thai trip do you want to do the thai blog okay then we went to indonesia and they were like oh. we're missing out on the fourth most populous country how do we let's start it let's die in there page. yeah so i was like we're traveling and i get my laptop out and be like i'm getting paid right now this is awesome i don't why would i even go back to teaching in smoggy beijing when i could just do this and so the wheels started turning there yeah because in high school they never said hey this is an option for no, you absolutely and, not yeah you know even like, in college where i studied media they weren't like you could be a travel blogger you could you know no, you got to go work for a you know you local go company local production leaders. company yeah, and you're right, or, at the fox station there you Nancy. go yeah well, we are what they call geriatric millennials because yeah. we're like the very beginning of the generation <laughs> yeah. and our generation is so big they have to split us up so we're geriatric millennials and like we still played Oregon Trail and we didn't grow yeah. up with yeah. like up screen internet. in our face constantly. Yes. And so like, I don't even think when we were in high school, people realized that it would even be an option yeah. to be able to work 100% remotely no, from a computer. Not. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it, we're just in this crazy world right now that you can do anything you want yeah. from anywhere, yeah. which is just amazing. I mean, I, I think about like, I graduated in 08 and I was in a digital media program and like, we were not at Michigan State, this huge school, even on top of like, what was coming up, we didn't right. know. Like, like I was literally still doing these like, you know, working at the TV station, helping the local news. Like, yeah. Why, what, why were they ha- having us like build your own YouTube channel, start a- Right, if you started back in LA, you'd be, you'd be set up. Or start to do digital marketing. Like that's what we should have been doing. We, I will say in my music business program, we were learning how to build MySpace pages. Ooh, MySpace. <laughs> so be wow, at least okay. at this. I mean, that, she was ahead of the curve. That yeah, like bands the were on MySpace for sure. Social media. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Is MySpace even a thing now? No. No, definitely not. <laughs> R.I.P. It's in the ash heap of Somebody history. bought it, Google bought it and shut it down or something. But we did, um, on that gap year trip that Rachel's referencing, before we left, I was like, let's start our own blog. That is when we started Grateful Nomads. I was already doing the stuff for the language company. I was like, I am like to fancy myself a halfway decent writer. Someone's paying me to write. I, I went to school for video. I always carry a camera. I always record stuff. I yeah. Edit. So I was like, why aren't we just documenting this trip? If, if anything else, just for us to remember. Yeah. And so it's funny. I, I thought we were going to, I was going to write a blog from every single place we went. <laughs> and about three stops into the trip in Vietnam, I was like, that's not like going to work. <laughs> we're going to do a recap of each country at the end of the month. That's right. <laughs> and that's that. And then that's how our, our Grateful Nomads started. And then after the trip, we were like, well, 
why don't we just keep this going? Keep and Rachel rolling. started learning about, you know, blogging as you know, source of income. And well, after our gap year, when we ran out of money, we moved to a different city in Southwest China, which had been the plan the whole time. Couldn't sure. It's a small city of 7 million that you've never heard of. And I got another teaching job, but Sasha had so much blogging work. He was like, you know, I'm good. I'm yeah. just going to do the blog. I did eventually go take a side. You took a super part-time teaching job just to get you out of the house. Just get me out of the house. And I like talking to humans. Like yeah. it was getting kind of isolating and boring being on my computers by myself all the time. But, but I, thought I was that like working full time. And you were still teaching English. She had a full time job. I was still job, teaching yeah. in a training center, so it was like evenings six and days weekends, a week, right? Six days a week. Your schedule and sucked. It was I so thought, bad. Well, I really thought that after just traveling for fourteen months straight, that I would be okay with going back no. to work. But I immediately realized I was not okay with going back to having a boss, having to yeah. ask for time off, being having to ask for permission. Especially to with me being this like freelancing, Especially when he's just carefree home dude. Day. I went to Macau by day. myself. I went to Bangkok by myself because I had to do visa runs. And she was like, "When do I get to go?" I was like, "Cause you have to work, dude." <laughs> Somebody's got to work. Yeah, someone's got to pay the bills. Work, as I say in quotes. Bacon and I cook it. That's like hey, yeah. telling people that you're. <laughs> But then it was like, she was kind of like, I don't want to stay in this job. We liked Kunming a lot. It's a very cool city. It's, it's more like a Denver kind of vibe than Beijing. A lot of hippies and live music and mountains. And we loved it, but we were like, we got to get out of here. Well, once you get to experience that level of freedom yeah. where you don't have any sort of responsibility, you can go wherever and kind of do whatever you want to do. It is addicting. Very addicting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to go back to whatever's normal. When you like ride a scooter to the full moon party in Thailand, it's very hard to go back to work, you know, and like, oh, I'm just going to go back to the normal nine to five thing. Well, like for someone who's listening, who's thinking, I would love to be just free and just with my laptop going around the Mm -hmm. world, making money. How, what would be a first step for them? I mean, I think you got to figure out what you can offer in in the realm of, you know, like what could you do remotely, right? Like a lot of jobs now can be fully remote, really. So the the net is very wide now. If you want to like, okay, I was a freelancing guy for 10 years. Now I have a full-time remote job. I work for a ticket company, Cash or Trade. I do marketing for them. But I also have- Cash or Trade.com. Cash or Trade.org. Dot work, Uh, dot work, sorry. Face value only. (laughs) Um, So like I have this full-time job now and my company is very flexible. So you can try to find a job like mine, or you can say, I'm going to be a graphic designer. I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to start a podcast, start a YouTube photographer, channel, it, photographer. I'm going to design websites. I'm going to, yeah. It really depends on what your skill set is. But in this day and age of online courses, you can learn, you can anything. learn anything. You can learn anything. Um, Some people just make memes. I feel like uh, I follow people on Instagram. That's all they do is make memes. How do you make money on a meme? Because your account gets so many followers and you get, you know. You become an influencer. And so people who are starting new accounts will pay them Mm -hmm. to promote. Say, Uh hey, go follow this account. And I mean, if your YouTube channel gets, uh, ours is monetized. All you need is, it used to be a thousand. Now I think it's 3,000 subs you need to be monetized. It's gotten a little, yeah. It's gotten harder to monetize. But I I can tell you how we did it. Yeah. Our blog was the first step Mm -hmm. because then it was through the blog that we learned how to write blog posts, do like digital marketing and promote ourselves. SEO stuff, search engine optimization. Social media. That's how we started to learn all of those things. And the thing that got us out of China was Sasha uh, got accepted to a study abroad program at a university in Bali. Yeah. So we moved from China to Bali, where I was just a housewife. She was it was, island housewife, tough yeah. life. So I focused all my efforts on our blog and monetizing it. And in that process, I found a job teaching English online, which then ultimately became our main source of income and what allowed us to actually become digital nomads and start traveling full time. Yeah, we were like, I got in this program in Bali. Awesome. One of the best, if not the best experience of our lives, hands down. Like we, like, we liked it in Kunming, but I... I, I just couldn't resist the urge. We'd been there twice and we loved it. And a friend had done the same program. It's a scholarship program through the government of Indonesia. They take like a thousand people from all over the world and put, put you in different universities to learn the language. That's cool. Uh, or to learn a dance or art, you know, some, some yeah. cultural thing. And they, they foot the bill. They give you a visa. They even gave me a couple hundred bucks a month, which didn't even cover our, our rent, but it was like, it helped out, it helped helped out. a lot. It helped. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I was doing the, the Indonesian language blog, the Chinese, all these different language blogs. And uh, we had Grateful Nomads and Rachel was like, I'm going to really focus on like, how, how, do, how does ours make money? You're making yeah. money for them. That's fine. But how does ours make money? Smart. And 
at, towards the end of the trip, we're like, okay, it's, it went by really fast. We live in Bali for 10 months and everybody comes to visit. We lived in China six years. Nobody. Visited. Nobody. We lived in Bali for 10 months. Everybody yeah. visited. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's even hilarious. Harder to get there and longer, more yeah. expensive. Yeah, trip, but it's but, a know, little nicer. Yeah, Beijing, Bali. It's like, you yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. My mom was Let's like, yeah, there. you have fun in China. I'm not going to visit you. That's funny. Bali, though. Yeah. Uh, but at, towards the end of the trip, we're like, all right, what the hell do we do now? They're not going to let me stay. Yeah. Um, you well, can't so really get a job there in Bali. They make it very no, difficult. No, they make it really difficult. So we were both teaching English online, and then that's what people started asking me yeah. about. So that was ultimately how I monetized Grateful Nomads, was Be an expert teaching, on teaching, teaching people how to teach English online for the purpose of becoming a digital nomad. And I had an online course, and... Um, a lot, that was how we got a lot of traffic, was from people coming to read those And blog we posts. should mention that at that time it was teaching online with a Chinese, yeah. or a couple Chinese companies, two Chinese kids. Most that was, where, yeah, that was where the money yeah. was. Right, to that, the Chinese. That was yeah. where the money was. So we were like, why go back to China when we can just take that job and go to move to Mexico? Yeah, well, and that's so that sounds did. past tense. So well, what that's it is. what we did for yeah. five and a half years. We traveled all over uh, Latin Mexico, America. Central, South America for, for about five and a yeah. half years. And using then, Mexico as home base, basically. Yes, Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta, Vallarta is our home base. And then the pandemic happened. Ooh. And then uh, China, the uh, Ministry of Education, basically banned online tutoring yeah. for kids. Which, which would be, I think, totally contradictory to where it's total nonsense. Everybody went here. We all went online. Why wouldn't they, you be? You know, we wanted to get it. They, they banned entire. tutoring straight up. Like, like after school, math tutoring became illegal because they. They were trying to level the playing field so people who that have money was, can't pay for private tutors anymore. That was the anymore. reason they told the press. Yeah. Yeah. They want people to have more kids and they thought, oh, no, everybody Again, doesn't want to have kids because it's too expensive. They told the press. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let us get into that nitty gritty. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going to go on that rant. Yeah. Either way, but anyways, we lost those jobs. The, yes. The point is that that completely pulled the rug out yeah. from under us because like, all, all of those online language schools shut down yeah. without warning. And there it goes our best content. Poof. It was useless all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah. Our so, top performing posts and videos like this is completely useless now. It yeah, of course. Course obsolete. All those blog posts yeah. obsolete. So you had to reinvent. So we had completely to completely reinvent. Had to reinvented. Completely so what are we doing now? So now I have my own online English teaching business that I do as a personal brand, RachelStory.com. So I get my own students that way. Nice. I have a profile on an online teacher marketplace, which is like a website where students can go shop for a teacher and pick the one that they like best. That's cool. Mostly adults in Europe and Latin America, not Chinese children. But I like students in Poland and Argentina and you know all over the world. That's awesome. Yeah. But I've also partnered with a company called Bridge Education Group, which is a big company in the English language teaching industry to create a program called the Teacherpreneur Academy. So now I'm the instructor and coach of the Teacherpreneur Academy. And it's a year-long program where they get a course called Succeeding as an English Teacherpreneur. And we have two live workshops and a live networking event every month. That's cool. Yeah. So She's doing all kinds of things. I mean, like and we still have the blog. Yeah. And you're still doing the blog. Yeah. But our blog now is more like, um, well, since I took on a full-time job, honestly, we haven't had a ton of time to generate new content. We do post very often to Instagram and Facebook and stuff. But, um, you know, we're trying to gear the blog now more towards, like, digital nomad life. So, you know, writing a post like uh, Buenos Aires for digital nomads, for example, and, you know, show the Airbnbs we stayed in and link to them and say how much it cost and, um, you know, well, talk about the Internet. Space yeah, I think that's super cool. Co-working spaces and this sort of thing. Yeah, because you know? you're, like, out and about finding all the different places. And now to... so many people are doing it. Like, right. when we moved to Puerto Vallarta, it's a vacation uh, retiree hotspot. So like, it's, you know, cruise ship people come with their wristbands on and they're in town. <laughs> they're like, we're going to get some Wi-Fi. Yeah, and then retired like- Retired snowbirds. And retired working snowbirds. Out. And so when we got down there and we were, you know, nomadic. There were not basically. many of us. Yeah, we like go to the same bar uh, that we found at this great happy hour and there's a much older crowd. And after like the third time, these guys turned to us and like, all right, you guys are not on vacation. You've been here like- Yeah, every day. Here. What's, what's, your, what's, what's going your on? What's your deal? I had to work for 50 years until I got to move here. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you here? Get off yeah, my what lawn. Are you doing? <laughs> We're just like, living your best nomad. life like 30 years early, bro. Yeah. Sorry. And we're like, what? And now it's like the town is full of digital nomads who left San Francisco to go live in the other Bay Area, the Mexican one, you know? Yeah. Well, and you're so like, now, thanks, Internet, so yeah, I can work yeah, remotely. Thanks, exactly. Now the mission is with the blog is to help digital nomads create a fulfilling and sustainable location-independent lifestyle. Because it's not easy. No. Like, the freedom it provides is so worth it, but it is not easy. Well, you got, yeah. Faint of heart. Yeah. 
you're on the run all the time travel day to bogota on wednesday like (laughs) it's like you're on the lamb you're like we got to go find a new place to live let's get out of here i mean we we very rarely (laughs) unpack the bags fully you know we have like these packing cube things it's kind of like a drawer oh that's cool so you take it out it's like there's my drawer (laughs) you zip it up and put it back in there move move roll keep rolling so now we have a course called the digital nomad income blueprint which is a course that shows people how they can earn on the go that's awesome based on our own like personal experiences yeah now i'm going to be able to like speak to the like what is it like having a full-time job and yeah. traveling you know and i started the job and was like i'm going to south korea for my brother's wedding in october I hope that's cool and they were like um yeah absolutely that's awesome as long as you sell tickets bro yeah <laughs> um, but uh, i was like okay well they're cool with it's remote work right so we actually went to turkey for a month because it's on the way to south korea yeah right? of course and um, everybody in my at my office was like that's so cool sasha's in istanbul like they, they were stoked they loved it but it's, it's because of like our blog and our YouTube channel and our social media channels that help Sasha oh, absolutely. get 100%. his fully remote yeah. job. So back to your question for anyone wondering how they can do this. Yeah. The answer is to just start. Yeah. Pick something and start. Don't feel like whatever that thing is, is the thing that you're going to be doing forever. Right. That's not how it works. Leave your options open. And- we live in the era yeah. of the gig economy yeah. now. Right. So you have a lot of different options. Mm-hmm. So the point and- is to just start and start to build that But you got to fight the fear. Too. Yeah. Exactly. 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 I mean, you it's definitely not for everyone. Scared. You yeah. have to do it scared. And be That's unprogrammed, gonna- right? Because we've right. been programmed. Like we got to get the job. The other was like, yeah. you're going to Columbia. That's awesome and scary. You know? yeah. like, it's my fourth time going there. I'm not, I'm not that scared. <laughs> I could just easily get mugged in Detroit as Bogota, you know? Yeah. Like, What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you guys, to, to learn how to do this? Well, we've got our blog, GratefulNomads.com, and we're Grateful Nomads on Instagram, Facebook. YouTube. We're Grateful Nomads Twitter. on YouTube. And all these, all, links, all these links will be in our little show notes yeah. down below. We are everywhere on the internet, um, except TikTok, because the Chinese government knows enough about us. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you guys are in Johnson City a few months out of the year, which yeah. is kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, we're in this region, I'd say four to six months of the year. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of, you know, my home away from home at this point. Um, and it I'm is my home. son here. It is your home. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's great. I love it. I love it. Um, okay, what's your favorite place you've been? Yo, Rachel first, ladies this first. That's a hard question. Okay, so like for traveling in, in, in the world. Well, I have we have different categories. Different categories. So my well, favorite just favorite, just just to pick. My favorite country <laughs> for traveling is Indonesia. Okay. Because it's a whole country of islands, and every island has a different culture, oh. a different religion, a different dialect, different cuisine. So you could spend years traveling in Indonesia and still continue to discover seventeen thousand islands. Yeah. Holy smokes! It's, it's wild. That's awesome. All right, Sasha. Uh, I will, so I will just give the second half of her answer, which I know is going to be favorite country to, to live as a, you know, as a nomad is Mexico, hundred percent. And it was right there on our doorstep the whole time. And we kind of were like Mexico, like Cancun, it's, you know, so yeah, played right out, but we have done so much traveling around Mexico and just absolutely love, love, love the place. And we hate Cancun, by the way, just death. Cancun in my language means snake pit. And that's Ooh. all you need to know about Cancun, you need to go inland, you need to go to the mountains, you need to go to the ruins, you need to go see the colonial towns that are full of pastel colors and markets that smell like mole, like that is, mm. and mezcal, and it's just- It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're so welcoming, like, our, my Spanish is okay, but like we went down there with no Spanish and just like silly gringos, and uh, <laughs> do you guys, very welcome. Do you guys see yourselves ever retiring? No, I don't think we will ever earn enough money. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, yeah, well, I don't know. I, and, and if, so, dad, and if my, so, we're going to we're going to retire in Mexico or Indonesia. Who knows? I mean, it really, yeah. That's, that's it depends on <laughs> or the visa, Johnson City. The visa policy is always changing, and you know now all these countries have digital nomad visas. Yeah. This is a brand new thing. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, now there are more options for you to stay longer term in places. And so people ask, are you going to settle down? Are you going to retire? This and that. It's really hard to say right now. But like we are really, really interested in the idea of finding a place we can we can stay for a year that would be a good base, mm-hmm. you know, so have like convenient in and out, um, yeah. and like the visa would allow us to be there. So we're really pursuing that option. We're about to go to Colombia just for the winter because we hate winter, and it's eternal spring in Medellin, Colombia. There you go. Um, but then we'll be back, you know, in Johnson City, Asheville, for the spring and summer, and um, looking yeah. looking for options for the fall. To Any European there. areas That's you're going what to? We're okay. yeah. We've got our sights set yep. on Europe. There's for a the few fall. places you could go for a year without even needing any kind of visa. Albania, Georgia. Georgia. Um, so yeah, that's. Um, I need to get a new credit card and get some points so I could get us over there. 
That's travel a, that's another thing we do a lot of. Yeah, travel of hacking. How we're able to do what we do, and we do have a lot of information about that on our blog. Like, so if anyone's interested, we rarely in pay about, dollars for flights. Isn't I just, that crazy? I, credit cards I get different miles. credit cards. I'll get one. I'll get the sign-up bonus. I'll book a trip. I'll cancel it. Oh, I'll refer her. Then I'll cancel that card. Then she'll get the bonus. And it's a whole it's thing. It's just this loop of. There's we have some track. friends who do that. And they I have like a whole. I got spreadsheet. Bulletin board yeah. of it all. Uh, use this one for gas. Yeah. Oh, if you're yeah. gonna buy. Absolutely. Yep. Now that we're Paint. Use this it. one. Whatever. I'm way behind. I need to get a new card. But it's like I found super cheap flights to Columbia. But then how they get them to you because you don't live anywhere. It's not like you got a. We do. We do keep a Johnson City mailing address thanks well, to my lovely mother-in-law. Yeah. And then so she'll open the mail. FedEx it. To wherever okay. you are in the world, right? Phone, yeah. and thanks to <laughs> Apple Pay and technology, yeah. you just need the numbers. You don't yeah. need the physical card most exactly. places. Look at that. I just use my watch most places. Yeah. I got one. We yeah. can buy some stuff. It's amazing. Like, imagine, like, even 10 years ago, something you could pay for something with your watch, like only in James Bond movies. Right? <laughs> well, I am super glad I got to catch you guys, and I'm glad we're friends now, so that anytime I'm like somewhere in the world, I'm just call you and be like, "Where are, we, where are you all at?" Because I need help getting somewhere. And you're you like, can oh, I got it, dude! We, we just helped her mom and stepdad book a trip to the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you need some uh, advice on, on travel or flights or Sasha credit cards, is a phenomenal travel planner. He is the reason why we. Do she just shows up and dances. Everything That's what that she we does. do. So really, She's if like, you <laughs> don't want to plan your trip. Sasha will gladly do it for you for a, a, for a small, fee. small, yeah. small fee. <laughs> very reasonable fee. Very reasonable fee. Yeah. I, I have, we have done that actually. It's like we have had people pay me to uh, plan their trip. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love it. Like I got so excited when I found her mom and, and uh, stepdad this direct flight from Charlotte to St. Croix. I mean, I've always said Ooh. I was going to pimp out your planning skills. <laughs> you know, and there, I you wasn't joking. there you go. There you go. I like it. I, I like it. Like I got, I get into the nitty gritty. Like I just booked us uh, flights. Uh, Last night at a bar in Charlotte, because uh, <laughs> Southwest was doing a 40% off sale till the oh, end of the, sweet. the day. And I went to a show in Charlotte with some friends and she didn't come. And my buddy bought me one of those steins of beer. Yeah. So I'm like halfway through this giant beer. Sorry, Dry January. You had, you, you had 10 days this year. Um, <laughs> but Rock Concert and friends, you know, called me yeah. to drink this giant beer. And I'm like, so where are we going? They have this sale going on. And I'm looking at flights to New Orleans for Jazz Fest. And I text her. I'm like, you want to go back to Jazz Fest? She's like, duh. So yeah. <laughs> Boom. We'll get some Flights beignets. New Orleans last night. You know? I love it. Here we go. Beignets and, and crawfish. Yeah. I love it. This well, April. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Speed round real quick, just because we got to get out of here. Let's say that you're in Johnson City and you're going to go on a date. Where are you guys going? Ooh, ladies first. Ooh. Hmm. That's a hard question because there are lots of new restaurants yeah. that I'm not really familiar right. with. Like I've had my eye on the Black Olive. Yep. Right over, right over here. here. That's a good spot. Right. Japanese fusion joint. Uh, one show. Yeah, that yep, menu one looks show. awesome. We have it is good. I you should take her there through. tonight. We might do that this weekend. Actually. There you go. Yeah. All, All right. right. Um, um, I, I would go Yeehaw White Duck because I know we both like tacos and beer. So. How? I mean, it just, it's so easy, so and, good. Yeah, especially if a football game's on. Like, you know, I'm lucky that my wife is into beer. Do you have a favorite nomadic coffee shop here that you like to hang out at? Honestly, we do coffee at home. We yeah. very rarely go to coffee shops, but what's the one we used to go to all the time here? Acoustic Coffee House. Is that still open? I don't think oh, so. Rest no. in peace. That place was great. We now did. it's Timber. Okay. Well, which is so a fantastic restaurant. We should ask you and, you know, it's yeah. just like we drink so much coffee and we really need it to function. So like <laughs> yeah. there's a so, pot yeah. in the morning <laughs> and... You know, we very rarely get moving uh, to go out for breakfast or coffee. We're, we're night owls. Really. I got gotcha. you. Like, you're up late. Yeah. Because you can. You don't have to be up at 4.30 30 to teach. In Italy, you're like drinking espresso at, at 10 p.m. And I don't know how they, they do it. They just go it's to bed. It's craziness. <laughs> if she drinks coffee afternoon, she cannot sleep. It's crazy. <laughs> What's your favorite pal's menu item? Big pal of cheese, Frenchy pie, peachy tea. Peachy tea. Where are you getting, uh, I, big guy? I was always on that tip from Rachel's recommendation, yep. but I have since fallen in love with getting a, a chili dog and a sauce burger. Yeah, those yeah. are good. Yeah. You are know, you a milkshake guy? And, you get I them. don't do the shakes. I usually just sip on her peachy tea. Their milkshakes are really good. They I get enough calories shakes. from the IPAs, man. I, I skip. <laughs> I skip. I, I'm from Michigan, too. Like that sweet tea, I, I get diabetes when I take one sip. So <laughs> if you can't get rid of, uh, we've already mentioned um, Yeehaw, which is a great brewery. Yeah. What's your other favorite spot to get a beer in town? What's all good? Well, I tell yeah, you, yeah, especially during the nicer months. When you and the rooftop. The yeah. rooftop. It is great. Yeah, it's they, great. They got I some just good stuff. am excited that there's a rooftop bar in Johnson. I mean, <laughs> we are big time. We are big time. And you have like multiple options for Thai food now. It's yeah. well, Johnson City's cool. Yeah, I love it's it. It's kind of cool now. We are, we are cool. <laughs> and you guys are partly why it's cool because 
We've got digital nomads rolling through, mm -hmm. bringing life and bringing stuff that's just mm -hmm. we don't have normally. I feel so. like Johnson City is is probably an overlooked and underrated nomad destination because everybody's sure. like Asheville. It's like Ash we we spend a lot of time in Asheville and I love it, but it's overcrowded and expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a lot of people who'd move. Like they want to move to the sure. East Tennessee, Northern or Western Carolina area. Mm -hmm. And they look over there and they're like, it's too expensive. But yeah. now we're price wise and housing just the same. I mean, it's so, so close. It's not like you couldn't pop down there for a show. Oh, people do that all the yeah. time. Yeah, the orange peel. I mean, before. Oh, that's what I did all through high say, school. Yeah. Carly was just looking today. My wife was looking at orange peel. Like, yeah. who's coming? Salvage Station is our go-to venue in it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's an old junkyard. Uh, yeah, I think I've been by that. Great, man. They have, they have an outdoor and an indoor stage. And now they use both of them. That's so you cool. can sometimes go see like four bands in one night. <laughs> yeah, and then just going over to Sierra Nevada and listening to some people just They do a lot of music. They do a lot of cool too. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome out there. That's cool. It's okay. Not a micro brewery. It's very macro. <laughs> Anything I forget to ask you you want to share before we get off here? Hmm. I would just plug the digital nomad income blueprint course yeah. one more time if you're interested in figuring out how to earn on the go and actually live a location independent or digital nomad lifestyle. Check that out. And if you are interested in teaching English online and doing it independently, then I would say check out the Teacherpreneur Academy. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. I think that's so cool. Absolutely. And it's one of those things that you don't think about. And people are doing it and living their best lives yeah. because they get to travel and, and see I, the world. I would also encourage people, you know, obviously our lifestyle is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you don't, if you like having your space and your things, right. like, like our you parents, can't, for example. There's some downsides. You don't have a dog. We don't have, yeah, we, we can't, can't have, have a dog. dog. We don't have kids. Kid. Yeah, yeah. Really, I mean, we have we have nomadic friends who have kids, but they've obviously changed their right. They they don't travel as intensely. They have a yeah. full time home base now. They have to bring a stroller and a, yeah. a car seat for Ubers and stuff like that. Very different. We don't have kids. All your belongings can fit into yeah, one but, but like, backpack. You don't have to go full on like 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 no. we do. You know, even if you have like a steady job and you do go to an office, maybe you're working a couple of days a week remotely, like a lot of people now. You could ask your boss, like, hey, can I? I really want to go like spend some time in Indonesia. There I, you I go. I want to go do yoga in Bali. Can I work remote for a month? Yeah. Shoot your shot. You well, know, you might why not? Do right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And there's always, you can, you can figure everything out. Everything yeah. is figure outable. Like if you do own a home and you don't want to sell it, you don't want to become completely, completely nomadic. Rent it out. There's a program called Trusted or House. get a house sitter. Where yeah. you can have people come stay in your home and keep an eye on everything. And you I like can this. also stay in other people's homes in other countries. Who and then you can take care of their pets. So you get to feel like you have pets. Pe their pets. And yeah. Nice. Everything is figure outable. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah it's I mean, I will. And since I work for a ticket company, I'm a big Hunter S. Thompson fan. I'll just quote the man, the myth, the legend. He said, buy the ticket, take the ride. Yeah. There you go. So. I like it. And tell me your ticket business again one more time. Cashflowtrade.org. We are a, a social platform, basically. There's a website and there's an app. And uh, you For can concert sell, tickets you can sell at tickets face value. Anything. Uh, you could sell tickets for sporting events, but we do primarily do uh, concerts and festivals. And yeah, you can list your tickets uh, for sale. You can only list them for what you paid. Okay. So we, we eliminate the scalping bit. And, do you guys um, buy bulk blocks and no, sell them? No, we don't. We don't. We are not a primary ticket. You're company. just uh, We have no inventory. Gotcha. We help you sell your ticket to other fans or we help you get tickets. And uh, it's kind of funny because it's a social platform. You make a profile, you have your picture, you have your little info. And, you know, sometimes not so much these days with the QR codes, but, you know, not too long ago, you would actually hand someone a ticket. And sometimes yeah. you would have to meet in person. And yeah. sometimes you sell the ticket because your friend bailed and that person sits next to you. We have five confirmed marriages from people who met because they bought. Oh, tickets how cool other. is that? So pretty awesome. I love doing that. Um, and yeah, like find us at a fish concert this summer, you know, <laughs> that's awesome. We'll probably be at 10 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I'm glad I got to meet you guys. If you ever want to buy a house here in Johnson city, call me. I mean, I'd love we, to, we would look here before Asheville. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We can rent it out for you. Help you make some income that would support your lifestyle. Yeah, you can really, get, we can deposit it wherever you want. It's and probably it's a lot not of fun. that lofty to even to say that yeah. these days. It's probably, you know, as we're approaching 40, that's starting to sound kind of nice. You're, you're, you might have to start adulting at some point. <laughs> we're not very good at hashtag adulting. <laughs> no, I like never I like it. I like it. I don't want to ever grow up. Sure one for us. But, on. Hey, there you go. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you guys for listening. And I hope it's you. It's 5 o'clock. I think we need to go to the brewery. It is time to roll and get a cold beer. So have a great day.